Hey everybody, Jay Shlansky here from the Fifth Trooper Network. I just want to take a moment to thank you for checking out this show. Did you know that over at thefifthtrooper.com we have tons of other content, including blogs, other podcasts, all kinds of stuff. In addition, if you want access to exclusive content, you can join us on patreon.com slash thefifthtrooper and join at any level and you'll get access to uh, exclusive blog articles, access to our private Discord, and much more. So please, Check us out, and thank you so much for all your support. Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello, and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Legion competitive podcast where we talk about this brand new game i don't know if you guys have heard of it it's called star wars legion um it's a really fast paced kill everything you want game and i'm so excited about it and i brought my friend mike so that we could talk about this brand new game man you're really trying to push my buttons today aren't you (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) yeah um (laughs) Uh, Kyle uh, is not here because he's on vacation. He will be back. Don't don't fret out there. I know. Yeah, he hasn't quit. Yeah, I know a lot of changes have happened at the Fifth Trooper, but don't you worry. Kyle leaving is not one of them. He just needed to spend some time in retrospective silence about his feelings, uh, and and he'll be back. So yeah, that's so we're here. I, I'm waiting to see the best conspiracy theory someone can put in the yeah, comments. Yeah. Um, so maybe maybe we'll hand out a reward for that. Yeah, <laughs> Jay, Jay uh, fired him for being too uh, exacting about his how he plays Legion. Uh, but anyway, so today, last week, we talked about the Galactic Army of the Republic, or GAR, for those of you new to Star Wars in the game. Uh, this week, uh, Mike and I are going to break down Empire, which is great because Kyle has never played Empire and is terrible at the game. So we don't really need his uh, expertise on this. Lies abound today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to pump us up. Like, there we don't you go, there Kyle. you go. He doesn't make this cast. Uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so anyways, uh, some quick housekeeping. Uh, if you like our content, you want to support us, you can join us on Patreon. We have a cool Discord server where we talk about Legion and give you behind the scenes at the Fifth Trooper. Um, and pretty soon we're going to be doing some really cool things with the network uh, across the board that you'll want to be a Patreon member for. So, so I highly suggest you come on over and support the cast. All the proceeds go to paying the staff and, and like our technology bills for hosting the podcast and all that stuff. So that would really help us out. Um, and then number two, don't forget there's two weeks left in the Kickstarter for game toppers. And, you know, if you're confused and you just want a map, you just want to get a map. Okay, and you go on the Kickstarter and you're like, Jay, how do I just get a map? I don't get it. This is this is crazy. Um, there's an a la carte pledge. Pledge that because the problem with Kickstarter is they only let you have so many pledges. We're going to have a bunch of different size mats. So do the a la carte pledge. And then once the Kickstarter is over, you can select whatever you want. Uh, so so that's how you do that. Then uh, and if you want one of the game toppers, you can do that. And you get two mats with it. So, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do uh, that that. And then, uh, yeah, that's all my housekeeping. And so, Mike, we can, uh, I'm going to be honest with the folks at home. Uh, <laughs> this is our fourth time uh, recording this because my computer freaked out. And so, <laughs> and so... we're, we're going to keep this as lively as possible, but it's entirely possible that we've discussed some of these units several times. Over. Yeah. And so there's going to be points where we're like, wait, did we talk about that already? But that was like, the fourth or third or the second time we tried recording this uh but uh it's looking good all my all my numbers are in reasonable uh areas on my computer right now so i think we're gonna be okay it's it's all gonna be okay mike um, hey i i was not that upset you were the one throwing I, things at your monitor <laughs> oh i was through the roof and uh it's so funny because mike could kind of 
I would freeze or he could still hear me. And I'm just like every single expletive word, like, I'm, I'll kill you, you stupid computer. I'll throw you in the in the effing ocean. I swear to God. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, but no problems today. We're we're full steam ahead. So uh, luckily, la the last couple of recordings, we've only made it a few units in. So we won't have to repeat for ourselves. You'll never hear it. Uh, but we won't have to repeat ourselves too much. So, so we'll, we'll get going. Um, yeah, Mike, why don't you hit us up with our first unit update? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to talk about director Orson Krennic first. Uh, he's now 65 points. He has spotter one, which is yep. new. Um, he's still got compel and cunning, both of which are are basically the same. He yep. has Entourage Imperial Death Troopers, which he still has, but is a little bit different. Right. Um, when you have a unit that has Entourage now, that unit provides backup to the unit that is has got the Entourage keyword. Yeah. And for it's a it's a better version of Guardian, basically. Yes, and can be used in addition to Guardian. Yeah. Notably, right. uh, obviously not in this case because they're Death Troopers, but for instance, Entourage. Uh, royal guard with palp but they would provide backup and good guardian so pretty excellent um <laughs> the big change to director orson krennic is a, he now has exemplar uh which is going to be a common theme that we're going to talk about today um so he can now share tokens with all of the the glorious imperial units around him um so they took it away from gar and they're handing it out like candy to everybody else yeah, it's really great. And that's what range one to two line of sight. Right? Uh range one to two line of sight and exemplar is now only uh um one token at a time as opposed to being able to just spend uh yeah. like ad nauseum off of the exemplar unit. Additionally, and this actually matters a lot for Empire and something that I didn't cover in our previous recording, Exemplar, I'm pretty sure, also requires you to be the same um uh affiliation uh what is oh, it technically yeah, right. called so it can't be like a mercenary unit so yeah notably like you can't like krennic can't exemplar a bounty hunter uh right. to my understanding um so keep that in mind uh for that sort of situation um but yeah so krennic's got uh the big things here are spotter and exemplar um krennic's blaster has also gotten a lot better it's now three red dice at range two yeah. he lost Ooh. pierce um, but three red dice is a lot better than rainbow. Uh, and uh, with the new cover changes, it's just it's, it's three hits. basically. Right. And and the change from search to crit to search to hit effectively would. Yeah. Right. The cover cover is such a jack jackpot hole now. Right. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you just have to kind of play like you don't have right. cover anyways. And if you yeah. do, if you like nail a roll, like great, but um yeah, Krennic's Blaster is a lot better. Uh, yep. Notably, he did lose Sharpshooter 1. Yeah. Doesn't really matter, though. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there was a change to his command card, Annihilation Looms. It now hands out two suppression tokens instead of one on uh, normal turns. And obviously, the game has been shortened to five rounds instead of six. So the um, end of round text is rounds four and five. And on those rounds, you hand out three suppression tokens instead of two. Um, the uh, promotion from one suppression token to two suppression tokens uh, per unit on Annihilation Looms is a pretty big deal uh, as far as yeah, um, just kind of keeping units suppressed. Well, it, 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 I liked it. I really like that change a lot because as someone who played a lot of Krennic, even recently, be right before the changes, like you never took that card because it just it just didn't do enough to like it often hurts you more than it yeah. helped you. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially with the panic changes uh it was just like all right well this is pointless but now you could do something like have vader and krennic and because you know mike brought this up in a previous recording where they, like the krennic's cheap enough now where you could have commander vader so now you could be handing out a lot of like back-to-back -back suppression which is kind of cool um but yeah anyways yeah, there's a weird interaction with this, and I actually don't know how it's going to work yet. Um, I have a I have a question on the rules forms about it that has not been answered, um, and that oh, is what happens jerk. if you 
play Annihilation Looms on turn one when nothing is on the board. Oh, yeah. um, because everybody gets suppression tokens uh, still, right? Um, but uh, you know, if you have a unit with Scout, are you still able to compel them? Even though technically compel checks at the top of the activation. Um, so like, let's say you're suppressed, you roll the rally, you fail it. I think what happens is you would choose to compel, then scout, and then take the compel move. Yeah. But it, it's a weird combination of like a bunch of new rules intersecting and in that like before you could never scout during your activation. So the intersection of scout and compel didn't matter. Right. And most of the time, this is never going to be relevant because I'm pretty sure this is the only way to put a suppression token on something that isn't on the board. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. We'll we'll see what that's about. Uh, I've had the I've had the question up on the forums for almost a week and it's been unanswered. So, <laughs> so they are. I think adding, I think they don't know the answer add, either. Deliberating it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they're trying that, to figure yeah. out the answer. Um, that's a we're gonna have to go to the devs and really deep dive <laughs> this one because yeah. that is a good question. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, you know. Uh, yeah. It, We'll see. I think there's uh, going to be a lot of those. It's a brand I think, new game. I think so too. I found at yeah. least three or four of them that are unanswered on the rules form uh, presently. So um, <laughs> we'll see how we'll see mm -hmm. how it goes. Um, nice. Shall we move on to General Veers? Yeah, let's let's do it. Cool. So uh, General Veers is uh, got a got a glow up just like Director Krennic here. Uh, he's still got a spotter two. He's still got Inspire one and Sharpshooter one. Yep. He now has Exemplar, uh, as you're going to find oh, yeah. a lot of these support units have. Yep. And perhaps the most importantly, he has Guidance Ground Vehicles now. He needed it. He needed it. Yeah, I haven't tried this yet, but, uh, you know, giving Ground Vehicle standbys and stuff seems like it's probably going to be pretty good. Um, uh, yeah. You know, that's something people don't take advantage of enough uh, is... It's uh is standbys on ground vehicles because they can't be shot off. Yeah, no, it's really good. Um, I do think uh the Imperial vehicles might have a little bit of trouble with it, I think, just because most of them are fixed front weaponry and yeah. and you can sometimes dodge those arcs pretty easily. And with how standbys work now, um which we probably haven't even talked about, uh, you can only shoot the unit that is triggering the standby as a result right. of the standby. You can no longer like have one unit trigger the standby and you shoot something else. So if somebody moves outside like an ATST's arc and the ATST wants to spend the standby, you're kind of up a creek as far as to what you want to do with that. Yeah, it's mostly like now it... it... It's more for like area control stuff, so that like if you're trying to control uh an uh they're not objectives now, but I'm gonna call it an objective. When you're yeah, trying the to, points of interest, yeah, yeah, points of interest. When you're trying to control a point of interest, you know you're gonna you're gonna get the ATST up there, get get Veers close with a standby on them, and then you know attack maybe you know, and then and then sit there and then spend the standby when something tries to take the point of interest, right? Like. <laughs> And yeah, murder it. Murder you definitely it. have to take the objectives in this new game, and uh, it's it's going to be pretty unavoidable to probably pop the standby unless yeah, there's some sort of weird circumstance. Yeah. Um. So, uh, pretty good for Veers. Uh, his blaster has been upgraded to three red dice instead of three white dice. He has Again, lost precise, right. yeah, and pierce. I think it's okay. Um, totally fine. Three red dice is just is just solid. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, with both of them, there was it's still a debate, but like there were uh, less with Veers, more with Krennic, but there was always this constant debate in my head, anyways, of like, okay, ninety percent of the time they weren't even in the action; they're just like hiding, like you know, especially Krennic was handing out entourage to death troopers, and that was basically it, right? That was his whole purpose and his cards. Um, but now with their with their weapons upgraded a little bit, I think that equation becomes a little bit different. I could definitely see popping them a little bit more just to for three red dice. That's in this 
the new version of this game that is a very good dice in this economy in this Uh-oh. economy three red <laughs> dice yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, are, what are the rich just keep getting richer it's like printing money yeah, yeah. um <laughs> yeah no it totally is uh yeah. you know this is going to basically be three saves that your opponent has to roll right. basically anytime these guys attack and they and notably they generally won't have to spend their own aim tokens yep. so you can save them for exemplar yep uh yeah that's general veers um imperial officer has had some similar situation uh going on here uh they're now 55 points um still have spotter one still have inspire one they've lost sharpshooter but they've gained exemplar um yep. so went up a point went up five right from their original i think they were down to 45 uh no, i think on the on the card they might have been 50 but i believe that they had actually been moved down to 45 oh, or maybe um i thought they were i thought maybe they got moved back but yeah it doesn't matter they're either up they're up they're up and, 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 and they should be points for, for yes the exemplar i do think for 55 points you might as well just pay the 10 points and get krennic agreed uh, you know i don't know yeah. i don't know why you wouldn't um because just paying 10 points for like cunning command cards seems pretty good um yeah. and having access to compel uh seems yeah. you know i i don't know um i'm a little i'm a little wary on a lot of the points costs of everything in the new edition generally yeah. is just as far as to like how it all fits together in a web you know i think that there's gonna have to be a lot of adjustments yeah um which is fine uh, but yeah, that's the Imperial Officer. Nothing super crazy. I think her blaster pistol used to be black white, but now it's black black. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I want to do the next one. I want to do the. You want to do the next one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Uh, that's fine. You can do the next. Don't one. you I know do who wanna, I am? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do want to just like highlight that these these three characters. Yeah. Um, these are the only Imperial characters that received a revision. Um, unless you count Mark Wand, I guess. Um, which I don't. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, and and basically the Imperial character revisions as opposed to the Republic character revisions are much more about building a support basis for the Imperial faction. Like the the character revisions in republic were just about like basically retooling characters and just making them do different things this is almost like sculpting what the imperial faction identity i think is going to be moving forward and it's a much bigger guidepost for what you should be doing as an imperial player um well and and needed for empire because i think empire was a little scat i'm not saying empire was bad but they were just scattered as to what their faction identity was and it it wasn't clear uh it was at the be- like in the early stages of the game like after like wave 3 it's like oh they're the suppression faction right like that's that's what it was for a while but then when when Krennic first came out, but then it got lost in all the releases. So it, I'm happy to see them kind of bring, and, and the fact that they like announced Thrawn and Gideon, and, or not Gideon, Gideon's already in the game. Um, the Thrawn, Thrawn, Tarkin, Moth, Tarkin, and, thank you, and Tarkin. Taj. Yeah, um, it, like, and they're doing the like ISB. You know, like I th- I think that's a really cool, uh way to change up the officers and how they affect the battlefield where exactly like i said all three of those characters were basically hide until turn six uh and then like run for an objective uh if you had to uh, you know like and now they seem a little bit more interactive which is which is nice so yeah yeah the fact that um oh it should be noted uh a spotter is also now range two as opposed to range one right, uh, right. which is a big deal which will allow yeah. them to kind of be a little bit more flexible in where you need them to be but oh, dude based yeah. on what you're talking about so the, well i i've okay i have thoughts on this uh which particularly with veers it i was gonna say which is a big deal but then it the way I played Veers with uh, heavies like ATSTs or the Gav tanks, it would have been a big deal in the old game. But now that like it's basically battle lines, uh, it's it's not as big. Like before, your your heavies would get away from you real quick, and you couldn't bring him out because he'd get 
myrtleized, you know. But <laughs> so it's like you would end up getting out of your spotter range real quick. Um, but but now that's nice. I like the range too. But also, you're probably going to be pretty close a lot of the time, anyways, especially with Gav tanks. You'd be surprised. Uh, okay. I think I think the games, whether for good or for you'd Ill, be surprised. Nerd. The game is the game is significantly more spread out. Oh, all right. You were you were definitely playing across the majority of the table, or at least, you know, seventy to eighty percent of it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good to know. Um, speaking of heavies, my favorite thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have the uh, the old Gav occupier tank. Um, so. A bunch of changes on this one. Some of them are game uh play gameplay changes, like for instance, armor uh has now been uh un- is now identified as a number, which I think it should have been the entire time. Uh, but you know, as the game grew, they weren't I, ready for all that armor. I have really mixed feelings about this. Ooh. Um tell me more, tell me more. For a couple of reasons. It feels like in this update, um, like uh individual short short dice pools or small dice pools are supposed to matter more and it feels yeah. like they've really decided to be like okay well you always get like a cover save or something against a small di- uh, uh regardless but it's much more likely that a small dice pool hits home and um for that reason it also feels like armor is way way better it should um, be but, well, it it just feels counterintuitive to like what they what they did with the rest of the rules. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Oh, I hear you. In in that like, um, it's almost it feels, and I'm not sure if this is going to be true. But my initial inclination when it comes to armor pieces is that you basically just shouldn't shoot them at all. <laughs> uh, so okay, the, I have a counter you, to this. Go ahead. Okay, the counter is for me. There was a bunch of upgrades like impact grenades that just were not being taken anymore because it just wasn't necessary because we got to a point in the game where armor meant literally nothing and you could just shoot and kill any armor thing so i like the fact that it's forcing these upgrades like impact grenades to come back into the game to to handle a situation like this um because if you think about if you go to a fight you don't know if i'm bringing tanks like and like, yeah. if I show up with tanks and you didn't come prepared for tanks, you shouldn't be able to like just blow me off the table because you got critical one or whatever. Well, and I think this might be like a, maybe all the armor is too cheap for how like the new the new game plays, but it is almost impossible to blow up these larger vehicles and actually be able to attrition your opponent in a way that is reasonable. Um, Good. I yes. I suppose it's good. I put together all my vehicles after playing a couple of games because yeah. it's actually sort of obnoxious. Um, and there's a couple of things that contribute to that other than the armor value. Uh, there's the fact that um, basically any unit you want to be invincible on turn one gets to be invincible on turn one. And so you can, you know, you know, whether it's through HQ uplinks or just giving out regular orders, you can give your, your armor pieces orders and just have them come out at the back of the turn and that means that even if your opponent brought impact weapons on turn one they can't actually use them yeah yeah. um so you lose a turn of actually like getting uh impact on target um on turn one and then by the time we get to turn three like the game's generally been decided so you really have one turn which is turn two to actually like put all of your impact weapons like hitting home and most of the infantry what uh impact weapons actually have cumbersome on them which means that you can't shoot you you can't move and then shoot which is in the new game you have to move a lot (laughs) and it's like really quite important um so actually being able to like put the impact weapons on target um is an additional kind of like hurdle to that I'm this is not me like crying about it this is just me saying this is like something that's very different and um, I think most of the time, sounds you, like you're you, crying, you baby. <laughs> most of the time, you definitely like 
just because a vehicle says armor five on it doesn't mean you should take your z6 pool and shoot it because they can do damage over the top of the armor keyword on it yeah. technically you should still be shooting infantry with that with that unit yeah. the, and and i think a lot of people are going to be baited into this idea that um oh it's only armor four that i i can shoot it with my core unit that doesn't have impact on it you are wasting lethality in this game mm -hmm. that you cannot waste by doing that and i and i just want to shout that out and make sure that people understand that kind of moving forward in this conversation yeah i, I yeah i think i think part of it too is we we and it's tough I, I find myself doing the same is trying to walk away from my preconceived notions of what Legion is because this is a new game and trying to understand what the new paradigm is in this, right? And so the way we treated armor uh, heavy weapons like this before, heavy uh units, we we can't you can't go in the same mindset and go, oh, I've got critical two. I'm gonna be fine. Like yeah. you're not, you are not gonna be fine, and nor should you be fine. That drove me insane. Like, I, as someone who religiously ran heavy units, the fact that I could get shot up by a pure gun line and just be obliterated by turn two is is crazy to me. And I'm so happy. And so, okay, rant over. Let's let's talk about the tank. Uh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> this is the real reason why I'm so excited about this new game is because heavy armor finally got its due uh, this is definitely this is the this is the update all the armor players have been waiting for <laughs> yeah, without it without a question um all right so our our good old buddy the gav tank um went down in points was 140s 125 now uh we've got so so there's no longer just the armor overall keyword it's all it's all armor x now so it's armor five which is really really good still um it's it's we, essentially armor yeah, yeah like outside of like a couple circumstances right uh arsenal two stayed uh reposition stayed but so, there is a change because of movement and how yeah. arm, armor moves now you get a free reposition anyway so now you're getting you can have one at the beginning and at the end of yes. of a movement now which is yeah uh especially <laughs> <laughs> especially with these guys because they're they're really donkey and <laughs> the, the new the new armor movement rules basically say do whatever you want with, with, yeah. with moving moving around your vehicle it which just, you know i mean mike you've been there like how like like i just go back to like my lvo game against nemo where like my tank was just dead on arrival on that stupid board because i could literally do nothing and the and the terrain and the board just dictated that i might as well have just tossed my tank into a friggin swamp because it wasn't gonna even like affect the game at all so i got it you know yeah yeah right <laughs> um <laughs> I like I like that that is now in there. Uh, transport is different now, so you're not like zooming zooming boyos across the the field anymore. Uh, so it's just regular transport now. Still weak point one on the sides, uh, which I think is fine. I always uh, was okay with that with the tanks. It, it I know a lot of people complain about it, but they're wrong. Um, and so <laughs> just you know, it is what it is. They're wrong. Uh, so twin cannons pretty much stayed the same and i think the weapons are basically identical the, right yeah the quad cannon stayed the same health and the break part stayed the same and there's still red dice and still speed one so yeah so there's a couple a couple things that look the same but i do want to call out the the major differences first um resiliency no longer when you when you hit your resiliency value you no longer roll on a chart Right. Um, you just are rolling a weight defense die, and if it's paint, you get two actions, and if it's not paint, you it's it's basically I don't remember what the what it was called. Maybe it was disabled or damaged mm -hmm. or whatever. It's just always that condition. You can yeah. never lose weapons to being damaged anymore or anything to that ex uh, extent. And it's just basically there's like a suppression step for vehicles when they are hit their resiliency value, which is fine. It was yeah. unnecessarily complicated before. It was. Well, and I think there was it was it made more sense early on in like wave one and two, and then as more vehicles came out and upgrades and weapons, and just, just like, like right. okay, man, like yeah, right. So no, I think that's a great change too. Um, 
so yeah, I'm uh, overall uh, happy. A lot of decent changes on this. And I know some of them are high level, like mechanic changes to the game, but uh, very, very good for the Gav tank. I really would expect to see more of this on the table, which is good because we weren't seeing a lot of it. How do you feel about the transport keyword changing? Like that's kind of a big deal for you. There's no yeah, longer, uh, you no longer honest, can hide E-webs in the back of your yeah, Gav honestly, tanks. Honestly, it's one of the worst changes that they've made. Yeah. I don't I don't like it either. I actually think it's like it's kind of a non keyword and it's, yeah. I actually think it is functionally like pretty bad. I think um so just so that we're I guess talking yeah, yeah, about it as it, it. works. Yeah, yeah. So um transport is sort of like infiltrate or scout now. Um so if you have a unit with transport during setup, you can decide that a core or special forces, and those are the only units that can be transported now. Yeah. So no more dark troopers, no more characters, none of that junk. Um, it's just core and special forces. And if you put the um uh like a double core unit together, they can't be transported. Correct. Um you you nominate them for being transported, and uh a couple things happen. The first is the the vehicle gives them an order on turn one. It's like the order has like direct whatever is being transported, essentially. Second, when the uh vehicle deploys. You then, during that deployment, deploy the unit that is being transported. They make a speed one move from the vehicle's base after the vehicle has deployed, and they're just on the table immediately, notably during the vehicle's activation. So your opponent is going to get to go before yeah. the unit that is being transported gets to go. So yeah. if you don't have a place to like hide them, they're probably going to get lit up because yeah. they are going to be forward of the rest of your stuff, probably. Um, it is, there's, yeah, there's a, they've taken away all of the janky, you know, like um, I've got Black Sun in my AA5 and I'm going to yeah. push my AA5 all the way across the battlefield so that the Black Sun are like completely invulnerable and then they're going to get out and yeah. then they're going to shoot you. So um, I get why they did it with how the structure of the of the new game. I get it. Okay. I just feel it felt okay. You know what? I've been very positive on this game and it's time for me to get a little negative. Uh this honestly felt lazy. Out of all the things, this is the one thing I think they it feels like they just came to it and they were like, oh shoot, transport isn't gonna work in the new game. Well, do we want to take it out? And someone was like, no, let's just make it so they just get an extra bump on the battlefield. And you're like, okay, sure. We, we've only got like two more weeks until we publish these. Is that what we want to do? It's like, yes. I think I, I almost like they all, they also um, took like open transport and closed transport and light. I think it was light transport. It was a light transport or I don't remember. It was, it was open called. and closed. That's well, there was the, the transport where you only got to carry one. Oh, like yeah. Character. Yeah. I don't remember what that was called. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so it was transport I, one. Transport one. Tra maybe yeah. it was what it was. Yeah. So I actually think they should have. I, I am kind of OK with closed transport becoming what this new transport keyword is um just from like uh let's make the game simpler perspective but there's no reason that we couldn't have kept open transport with the right. new rules like there's no reason that you couldn't have had just like a squad of de like death troopers in the back of your gap you can still shoot them you're still it's still the game's still just as lethal like why is that not okay right. um uh probably because of the cover rule change and like whether they, or not they've got they heavy cover, cover in the gap like right. that's what they had before right no no i'm saying but like if they're changed from how cover like would you have to roll to see if you had cover or not in the back of the gap like yeah you're you're right. in the back you're in the tank yeah. like you you got cover right like yeah you're, you're paying for the your your pain points for the cover for yeah. for the cover for, for mobile unit, cover right yeah I, and, listen. and like as long as the vehicle is costed appropriately like, yeah that's fine i agree out of all the changes but I, I, this by far i think the most egregious and <laughs> it's silly. It, it I just, may be biased. It, it dumbed something down that didn't need to be dumbed down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, we don't. We don't. And I don't get to put my e webs in the back. I'm right before the changes. I played like I thought that was really cool. Yeah, <laughs> like just... where I was playing double gab, double e web, smacking people around. I missed that. Yeah. Gone now. You took it from me. <laughs> <laughs> anyways. <laughs> 
<laughs> um and, but but it is a big change to transport yeah um just keep that in mind as you're as you're playing your games i guess yeah, yeah. all right next up uh i'll do this one too short troopers so uh these guys are extraordinarily you know, different yeah <laughs> yeah i honestly thought there was a mistake and i'll talk about in a second uh so they have coordinate uh and placement troopers still and they have prepared position uh which is a completely new uh word which is basically you get to deploy inside of your area you don't start on the on the outside of the table you actually start in your they don't call them deployments anymore. I've really not memorized their this is during key, setup. keywords. Yeah, during setup. Yep. So you so you're starting on the board basically in, in a in a position and and ready to go. Notably, you get a dodge token when you do this. Yeah, it it is not optional. Right. Um. So if you take in short troopers, they start on the on the table and they start with a dodge token. Um. I think prepared positions is actually like a pretty bad keyword. I'm going to be honest. It means okay. it, and, and uh, I'll elaborate on why um, prepared positions means. So normally like everybody at the start of the game has uh, a number of invulnerable units equal to the amount of units that they have. Um, when you take prepared positions, you're putting a unit on the board. They yep. can't shoot anything, yep. but can be shot. Yeah, and with the lethality of the new uh, new addition, um, it's very possible that before your short trooper actually has even the chance to shoot something, um, you've lost half of it. Which is clearly why they they've given units dodge tokens for prepared positions. But I just I don't think it's I don't think it's enough. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting. I I could see some. Pl I I don't know. I haven't thought about it a lot enough yet. Right, but like. I could definitely see some play with m maybe um, like you're using them just as kind of like a target so that your your opponent does waste some activations on it and you're doing something else. Like maybe if it's like, like bait, like, yeah, maybe, like a naked maybe. shore trooper, you know what I mean? And you're like, oh, yeah, go ahead, shoot that while my ATST sneak around and like, well, they don't really sneak anymore because they don't get cover. But like <laughs> as they like move around to the other side and, and crush your soul. But I don't know. I don't I know. I suspect the situation where it's going to be good is when you saturate your list with prepared positions and your entire list is just on the table from the jump. Yeah. Um, I think that is probably when it's going to be good uh, because there are a number of other units we're going to talk about today, I believe, that have prepared position on them. Uh, uh, maybe not a number, but... Like one other one? Um, well, uh, the there are two, but one actually isn't on the list. Right. Um. I think it's just e-webs right it is e-webs but the second one is the df90 mortar and when you are oh, a detachment yeah. you gain the deployment keywords of the thing that you detach so technically the mortars got prepared position as well yeah um so the weapon uh profiles stayed the same except for with one change the blaster rifle uh, gained long shot, which means you could spend an aim to increase the range of your weapon by one. Um, and then that kind of is why they're actually their speed got reduced down to one as well, um, because that would be crazy if they could speed to and increase their shot by one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if if short troopers are like good in the new edition, it's because long shot is good, and yeah. it's because there are so many units with um, exemplar uh, available to the short troopers, and they can move share a name token for long shot because they no longer have target, right? Um, which is a big deal, uh, and uh, they can now shoot their entire dice pool uh, at range four instead of just the T twenty one B. Yep. So. Yeah, and so all that, uh, they are same points. They, you know, we'll talk about, but they can add, they can add extra dudes. Uh, yeah. You can double a short trooper squad too. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Whether these guys are good or not is going to come down to prepared positions and how people are able to leverage it. I mm -hmm. hope I'm wrong about it being a bad keyword, but it seems strictly worse than infiltrate at this point. 
yeah it's it, it's interesting and i i just don't know i guess maybe i gotta i'm much more of a like get it on the table guy so like i gotta see and like think about you know how, how i'm gonna get these guys out there um but yeah so um yeah 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 that's they're good yeah there's something i don't know yet i don't know i don't know what they are but they're something Shall we talk about these stormy boys? Yeah, go for it. So stormtroopers, I'm pretty sure, um, really only had one change, uh, I think, and that is their melee profile is no longer a black dice; it is a white die. Yeah, um, which is fine. Clearly, they're trying to make uh, some room for the riot control uh, troopers that are on the horizon, which I believe are going to be yeah. core unit. Um, one thing I will say, I've been playing a ton of Stormtroopers in this new edition. I've actually played the most games with Empire so far, oh, um, yeah. mainly because um, I used to be a huge fan of the Stormtrooper DLT and the Stormtrooper DLT with how the game evolved over the last five years. Uh, the DLT became a pretty obsolete heavy yeah. weapon very yeah. quickly um, because of how cover worked. <laughs> but because of how cover works now, the DLT is real good. Yeah. Um, so and and stormtroopers with the DLT are super cheap. I believe the DLT is only twenty points, and a stormtrooper unit with the DLT is only sixty two. Um, to be able to just like chunk like two red dice yeah. at range four, it's basically a sniper team in a core unit, and then when you get to range three, you get to just you know. Yeah, really, that was one really of the, the best them. things that they've done, right? Uh, man, I'm just like super jacked about that. <laughs> it's well, it's like a... it's really weird to me because there there there's like something that's very incongruous about this, and that like the stormtrooper GLT is only twenty points. It is two red dice. Yeah, right. They have jacked the price on all of the sniper rifles, like through the roof. But they have not changed the Stormtrooper DLT, which is insane to me because the Stormtrooper DLT is almost better. Yeah. Um, like the, the Arc Sniper is now 37 points. I think the um the Imperial Sniper, let me just just for um uh cost cost analysis here. Uh the scout sniper the, the scout sniper is 38 points it rolls two black dice not searching yep. um and uh it's very clear to me that these things something's something's not right here <laughs> uh i don't one know of these things it's not like the other yeah one yeah. of these things Be because with the, with, with the new cover yeah. changes like a DLT is basically just as good as a sniper. Um, it yeah. is it is half the cost. So um, yeah, it, it's it's actually better than most of the snipers. It's definitely better than the Rebel and Imperial snipers. Um, yeah, and it, again, it just plays into what's happening, who you're facing against. Like high velocity could come into play if you got somebody with some dodges, but like at, you know. Is it enough? I don't know. For not for... not to pay like sixty to seventy points for a strike team, right? You know, yeah, fun, fundamentally. Yeah, when, it's you, when you could just have an entire stormtrooper unit with a DLT for the same cost, right? Yes. So yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, the next one is them snow boys. We uh we got to them, so they are. About this, they're two points cheaper. I think they're forty four before, so they're forty two points now. Uh, they they hold on to steady, which they've always had, which is one of the greatest things about snow troopers. Um, <laughs> they uh basically move their their fisticuffs down to a white dice as well. So in melee, they they're no longer a black dice. Range one to three, one white dice stayed the same. Health the same. Uh, courage the same they did uh they still search to hit uh red defensive dive still the same speed one 
Yeah, I think the big deal with both of the snow troopers and the storms is that you can you can take the double the squad yeah. personnel size at this point. And I actually think the double the personnel squad with the snow troopers and uh what is it, disembark for ground assault or debark for ground assault in Blizzard Force, I actually think is gonna be really scary. Yeah. Um, because it increases their speed and you can all of a sudden have like a squad of 10 snow troopers with a flamethrower potentially like flaming things on turn one yeah um because you can you can do some some pretty pretty gross stuff with that so yeah that's so good <laughs> so much it's so many dice yeah. uh <laughs> yeah and uh what were, were we talking about like because you can also you could also have like dell or as part of it too right like so you, you could. could have him and and the extra troopers so like you're almost doing the same thing i think it's even a little bit cheaper than a strike team too right like so you could it is i um how much dell's 35 now they've they've jacked up the price on a lot of the um the characters too um, yeah and and i don't want to say i think it's too early to say that they've like price snipers and a lot of these characters out of the game but i i think it's my gut instinct is that it it's very close to that. Well, um, yeah, because it's let's see, I'm just looking. So it's like eighty six for a uh, for a scout trooper with a DLT nineteen and a snow trooper with just Dell is seventy seven with steady. You gotta you gotta find an aim token somewhere for lethal, but with, a, with exemplar. exemplar, that's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and spotter. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, uh, so you know, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and I get to repair my uh, my heavies. <laughs> and and Dell Dell is just straight cheaper, I think, than the the scout sniper rifle. Yeah, and I think um, is Dell is Dell is Dell two health. He's probably yeah, yeah he's two health. He yeah. is. Right. So like you're getting two health, you're getting a sniper, you're getting two points of free repair, you're getting high velocity. Yeah, you need to find a name for lethal, but in 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 this economy, uh that should be that should be fairly easy. Well, yeah, so. and and it's easier with study too, right? Because you're you can stay closer. <clears throat> Not that you have to be that close anymore, but like you could stay closer, then pop out, do your shot with the aim and yeah you know i mean it's it's a more reasonable thing now um and so yeah uh all right so we'll move on to the heavy response unit uh i gotta get my my other thing up here um i was looking at something else dumb of me uh i was looking at the rules i had to remember what long shot did exactly because i knew there was some <laughs> uh so okay so these guys are roughly this 40 points. They're, they went down four points, so they went down to 36. They've got a uh, flexible response two still, precise one still. Uh, they've got special issue blizzard four still and unhit hindered. Uh, their fisticuffs went down to a white die like the other ones. Their blasters are the same, hell same, uh, uh, whatever the same uh and surge to hit still red defense dies still still move to yeah hr user the same unit uh, outside of the melee profile basically yeah um so in in the points cost so no no huge change there <clears throat> no just a couple points uh okay so the good old eweb my favorite unit and has been from the beginning uh <laughs> all right so <laughs> they uh they went up 10 points there's there's some reasons for that so they have the prepared positions which we talked about with the shore troopers um which i think is a little little bit better on them uh though they they can be a little glass cannony from someone who's played them uh they they have turns where they roll real high and turns where they don't roll anything and it's just it's just part of an eweb um they have they have repositions still. They have sentinel still. Uh, they still punch two black, uh, which is interesting. That there's two snow troopers on there and they're punching and they still, punch <laughs> black, but the rest of the snow troopers can only punch white. Uh, just just an interesting little thing. Um, at range uh, three, they still can shoot two white dice. 
their uh their dice pool for their their gun is still the same they are range four now up to range four which is a uh, bueno um they got cumbersome still they've got fixed front uh they do have impact one now though which is cool and they do have search to crit still still same health still same uh uh whatever i keep saying wanting i could the word keeps dropping on my head but they still have two uh for panic um courage. Whatever, that, whatever that word is yeah. courage thank you um yeah i mean yeah they're gonna get in the mix real early so if you don't kill them right away they're definitely gonna be able to shoot something they're they're pretty cheap for what they do you know um slap a barrage generator on on one of these guys and i think it's it's pretty decent um yeah I think the and they've always so ewebs the way I've played them always people are very have always been very scared of ewebs for for no reason whatsoever uh and so they always go after them first when they're on top of the gaps when you put an eweb on the board everyone wants to shoot ewebs first and I have always been like okay they're literally my cheapest unit Go ahead. Waste waste two, three activations trying to take them off the board while the rest of my army moves up and, and murders you. Like, it's fine. Because my trade on activation is going to be much different than what you just took off the board. Um, so, yeah, I think I think having the prepared positions is good. It's, it's good. It's all good. Yeah. This is definitely kind of... I think if short troopers and ewebs are good, it's because you're working with them in unison and kind of building a list that is like all on the table. Um, yeah, because they because in, in uh, with the coordinate and placement, you can coordinate to a eweb. So yeah, um, there's definitely some cool things you can do here. Uh, I haven't actually put an ewebs on the table yet, so not super clear on how they're functioning. But range four is a big deal. Yeah. Yup. Uh, you want to do scout troopers? Yeah, um, so scout troopers are basically the same. Um, there are two major changes, uh, three major changes to the scout trooper kit. The first is how low profile works. Um, it is, for all intents and purposes, basically the same, but the new text of low profile, but when you go to roll a cover save, rather than like, rolling all of the dice you just roll all of the dice minus one and that minus one die is just automatically turned to a block so when you're taking a cover save you just automatically get a block which is which is like basically what it was before mm -hmm. um the second is that detachment works differently we've talked about that a bunch but like in order to take a strike team you got to take a full team um and in order to uh and, and like the strike teams don't actually count against your special forces requirements the last thing that has changed is actually on their uh weapon weapon cards um they've changed mines basically through and through um mines are now just range one attacks they're like throwing it's like throwing a gr really good grenade basically um mm into into the pool um which is which is fine um i think it might be the default way to take your your scouts now because it's like half the cost of a sniper rifle and the game is played at such a range that the sniper rifle is like basically not really necessary anymore um so it's just those those are the the major changes for this and have they confirmed that the one is a misprint the one yeah next to the unit it says one as in you take one mini uh. no because this is the strike team unit card the the right, right, right. the uh the scout the scout unit card actually hasn't been updated. Only the strike team unit card did. Right. And that, and that's, so because... you got to take both. So you take two more mini, I'm sorry. So you get two more. Like, how does that work then? So you, you've got the one mini that's in the strike team and then you add the heavy weapon. So you've got the two. So you're, so you, uh, right. Okay. And that gets added to the 
scout trooper unit? No, it's still an independent strike team, just like it normally is. It just does not functionally count as a special forces unit towards your restriction of three special forces. So you take a normal scout unit, right? And yeah. and that enables you to just take a strike team for free. Uh, not for free. You still have to pay the points for it. But it does that strike team you take does not count as a second special forces option. So you can take three full scouts and then three strike teams and still have... That's where I was getting forces. confused. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, baby, baby. that's that's right. So it was like how arcs were in the in the five oh first. Yeah, had, in in yeah. all of the all of the strike teams are like this now. So this applies to arcs. This applies to rebel commandos. This applies to BX droids. This applies to um, scout right. troopers. So I have so, to take a naked scout trooper team to unlock strike teams, and then I can take them. Yeah. Okay. Well, and and notably, it's not it's one to one, so you can't take, for instance, one full scout team and two strikes. That's not okay. Right. If you you have to for each strike team you take, you have to take a full unit. Um, the full unit doesn't have to have a heavy weapon, um, but but you do have to take the full unit. Yep, heard. Um, yeah, which would be cool except the idea of putting like paying 40 points for a sniper rifle six times is insane right <laughs> it's just not nobody nobody's gonna do that or nobody that one wants to win is gonna do that yeah okay yeah i was all backwards in my <laughs> I was like, well, there's a lot of... there are some things as as hot as i am on the the new game style some of the unit mix-ups are like there's a lot of like circular logic that you have to use in order to just get a unit on your team like you know you're like, what What do i have to do to get this guy um, yeah i mean honestly these are the things that i actually don't care about at all oh. <laughs> i'm like i'm like yeah that's sort of neat whatever so that's funny yeah i guess maybe we'll reverse there right like yeah. <laughs> it's like some of the unit like logic to like even get them uh and then you guys wonder why we didn't keep up with legion hq uh no i'm just kidding <laughs> Whoa, that was a completely Jay, you're different gonna get reason. a ton of flags <laughs> yeah, for that one. <laughs> that, was a, that was a different reason uh okay so on to uh the the robo boys we got the dark troopers yeah. they went down five five points I, I think they went back to their original cost maybe yeah. i i yes. don't know yeah original printed cost yeah you're right yeah um they okay so again no flat armor they went to armor three which hey good right? uh, it's working. good but i actually think of all the armor units uh i don't know why you would ever take dark troopers now i think they're real bad <laughs> that's all right fair that's a good hot take uh you got plotting still you got uh unconcerned still unstoppable still uh all your dice and and weapons stayed the same your health stayed the same uh and your dice and your movement all stayed the same just the points and the armor i think are the big the two big changes right yeah and i think so armor three is low enough that like you can get over the top of it with most squads right um and uh a dark trooper unit with both heavy weapons the frag and the assault cannon is still 195 points. It is significantly, significantly more expensive than an ATST with all the fixings. Um, and these guys kind of like don't have the benefit of a um, deployment keyword. You can't give them, can't give them scout. You can't give them infiltrate. Um, right you can i think you can deploy them with uh i think the the one exception to that i think is if you take gideon you can use his two pip yep um but but if you don't have gideon these guys are just a 195 core point core unit with 10 health that um like has permanent cover under the old edition which is not good um, but and i don't know you know i think it may have been an overcorrection from from like hearing the meta but i think also it kind of drives them towards you know gideon and a remnant battle force which you know okay maybe yeah, that was I the design I, could, I don't know 
if you want to take like one dark trooper unit and fly yeah. it in with that command card like fine um but i think the days of seeing like two to three dark trooper units um i think that's a positive for the game i think having one maybe, on the board using gideon doing remnants and you just have one i think that's okay maybe i think the the main issue i think is with uh list going to a thousand points uh in order to like actually take a remnant list that works you have to take at least two um yeah that's there's true. just nothing else to take fundamentally um so I, I don't know uh we'll see i guess but i suspect that um dark troopers will be on the first chopping block for points reductions um in whatever the next update is i think it's uh, honestly on that topic we're probably a few away because i think in, at adepticon they're gonna have released the new the others they said there was another wave of changes so so they did changes um, i did watch the gray squadron interview with will schick today um basically uh they he, he basically came out in that interview and said that there will not be another update until next summer oh. um and oh a will, points update no just no just like any update whatsoever um like we're not getting more cards we're not getting more stuff for for like the new legion until next summer and when that happens they're also going to be releasing physical product um that is not what they said on stream i'm i th that he was yeah. very very transparent and clear about it in the interview and he actually like walked some stuff in the interview back that they definitely said and he very intentionally walked it back like uh one of the things he said was yeah we probably should have called this 3.0 which i thought was interesting um i think they they're understanding that their uh dialogue around around this is like been a bit disingenuous yeah. um and one of the other things that he did say that was cool is that we can expect uh, two to three faction advantages for every faction that are like, these are, these are rebel advantages, these are imperial advantages, these are republic advantages or whatever. Yeah, which I, um, I think we, we kind of said on our like, on the reaction, you know, uh, stuff was, I mean, that was always my what i was like looking for like that, that's a real opportunity for the future. I agree. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I, I'm about it. I think it's a great idea. I really hope we don't have to wait a year to see additional yeah. battle cards because the ones that they released are pretty bland. But um, I guess we'll see. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, so moving on, uh, we've got the lat. Uh, so armor, again, went to a number. Uh, the lat's got five. Arsenal two stayed, cover one stayed, hover air two stayed, immune to the blast melee range one stayed, transport again changed. Yeah. Um, it's the same same rules what we were talking about with the gav. Uh, the weapon did get changed. It's two red, two black with impact one now. Um, it was a rad three black and just fixed front before. So that is that's a big change. And I think we missed that on the Gar one last week. Uh, that's very possible. The, the weapon profile changed uh, for that as well. Uh, yeah. Health stays, breakpoint stays, uh, and uh, still surges on defense, still speed two. I believe the points went down five points. They were 100 they're, or 105. They're 100 now, so. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially the same vehicle, except it also lost transport, basically. Um, yeah. Like, obviously, it still has the transport keyword, but uh, the the lat was only ever good for delivering something into like melee, and like now Vader. Now, and right, and now <laughs> you can't now you can't do that. So right. I I don't know. They they needed to bring this down like. 50 more points like if this was I, like 55 or 60 i think reasonable but this thing is essentially just an e-web with armor five just for comparison it doesn't even here. have the range but anymore. yeah i mean the base is a lot bigger right. yeah it yeah. moves a lot faster it can move and shoot you know like it, as far as like offensive output goes this is not going to be much better than the e-web it is 40 points more what you're paying for is the armor five it's it's still too expensive, probably. Yeah. Um, in, unless somebody figures out a way to like abuse the new transport rule, but it feels yeah. it feels significantly less busted than it used to be. So, uh, yeah, and it wasn't even that busted before. It was just where eh, yeah. with the lat. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely was like, yeah, there were 
Yes, you are. Okay. The lat has never been good since the moment it got released. It was good for five minutes when Evan was doing his Vader drop at Adepticon two years ago. And even then it wasn't that great. I was going to say, I mean, I'm not, I, I would just have fine. more on Evan. Is Evan pretty, pretty yeah, good at the Evan game. Player, and like, yeah. I've been, to, you know, yeah. Um, okay. So Mark, uh, major Farquad, uh, he got some changes. I think, I think this is just, I think the, the, the ATSCs basically um, got the armor keyword reduction, and I think everything else is the same. Yeah, I think he had a points reduction. That's fair. The the points think, on these might be yeah, changed. He too. went down. He went down ten points. Uh, just let's we'll go through everything. Just make sure armor was the change. Arsenal two stays. Direct vehicle stays. Field commander stays. Weak point rear one stays. Special issue stays. Uh, grenade launcher is the same. Uh, let's see, twin light is the same. Uh, the other one, twin blaster, is the same. Uh, yeah. So you're right. Everything uh pretty much stayed the same. It's just points and and armor. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just you know uh, I think the ATST is it, it is worth noting that the ATSTs I think are significantly better with the cover changes. Yeah. Um, good. You know, I, there are some units that are going to like feel like they benefit from it more than others. I think the ATSDs are in the benefit from it more than others camp, just in in how they work. Um, well, listen, they were they were okay, right? Even with Tempest, they were fine. They weren't like storming the meta by any chance. It was just certain pilots, people who were playing those, could get them going if you knew how to play uh, heavies. But I mean. Dude, every like double or triple heavy game I was playing with Tempest Force was a, was a struggle. Like it's not, they're not. It wasn't easy to keep them alive uh, or to kill things with them. It, it's just how you played and and your strategy that kept you going. But yeah, they needed this. Um, so the ATST went down ten points too. Uh, the armor change, Arsenal still there. Weak point one still there. The uh, their fence cutting blades are still four red, and their twin blasters still double rainbow with impact pack three still white dice still surge on defense 11 and eight it's all all the same 10 points in the armor fix yep. Um, yep. um yeah nothing crazy there uh still probably want the hammers pilots on them you know uh definitely uh you should be taking things with exemplar to back up your your atsds and your tanks uh because giving those things uh you know you can like spot or two with yeah with veers or spotter three with veers give the atst a name token give veers a name token and the atst has basically gotten two aim tokens right yeah i mean that's um, the big thing um i don't know that this really okay i don't know that tempest force really got anything bonus out of this and in, in fact because of how the way scout troopers kind of work now um I don't know. Tempest Force didn't really benefit a ton from this. I think regular Imperial lists that want to run ATSTs with Veers uh, really got a boon out of this because Veers and ATSTs were it was like peanut butter and jelly. They're made to be together. And so, uh, you know, having Veers be able to do all this other stuff and guidance and all that, it's it's really, really good for ATSTs and running double double heavy lists. You know? Yeah, I think as uh, as we kind of like wrap up the conversation regarding like vehicles and stuff, it should be noted that displacement is no longer a thing. Um, so like you can move through other miniatures with vehicles. Uh, you cannot displace things with vehicles, which means that if something is sitting where you want your vehicle to be, it it can't go there. Right. Um, which is a which is a fairly large change, but uh, specifically for these larger base vehicles. Um, you can actually like your opponent can in theory create like a web with their trooper units uh, around your units so that your um, your vehicles can't move. We actually had that come up in a game uh, with a persuader tank the other day where the persuader tank like literally just couldn't go anywhere because yeah. it, there was just like a sea of infantry around it. So um, got to be careful about that with the new stuff. You, there's uh you know the the new positioning rules for vehicles are pretty forgiving but um you can still get locked into place yeah it came up like in all my games with atsc's playing double atst it comes up once in a while i think it's going to be more important now because they can score 
where yes. they had less opportunity to score before. Um, so it's going to be a bigger deal now. So if you're not a heavy player and you're trying to block out a heavy player from scoring one of those points, uh, Mike's right. You know, just I would position myself in a way where they can't get up to the point. And there you go. And it's very, yeah. it's very possible and reasonable. Now, are you going to be able to kill that unit before the ATST gets there? Probably. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you can't. Right. So. There's definitely going to be some like last minute heroics where you run your unit up and surround it and then make it impossible for the ATSC to get up and score. Um, but you, your timing on that's going to have to be really clear. And I think if you're playing against a good heavy player, they're uh, usually my ATSCs are the last thing I activate uh, on the table. And so doing that, trying to block out a point before my ATST goes is going to be bad for you because my ATST will obliterate you before and just walk up and take it. With the armor changes, though, I do think that there's a big... Uh, you can still block them all from like putting their infantry yeah. on a point, right? And armor is very hard to kill now Yep. to the point where like it's almost not worth it. Um, so blocking with vehicles is still definitely a thing. Yeah. Um, you just can't like... Before the displacement rules with like key positions and stuff were pretty, pretty rough for those that did not have vehicles with them. Uh, yeah. So, all right. Uh, so last thing we have left is command card changes. We could go through a few of them. Uh, might yeah. Be. Um, I don't think there are a ton, but uh, command card changes for Empire. We already talked about Annihilation Looms. Um, Darkness descends, I believe, has just been like re-templated. It does the same functional thing. Um uh, so it's got the permanent, it's not divulge gains reliable too. Uh divulge. Oh, so I think it's the res the changes between it's not deploy unit step anymore. It's yeah, it's a resolve setup, setup effects effect step. Yeah. Um he gains infiltrate and scout. Uh oh, he doesn't get scout one anymore. That's that's one of the big changes. So he gets the infiltrate oh, sure. and uh and so so and infiltrate's different now. It's it's like, much better. Yeah, yeah. Much better. Vader's showing up to the party when he wants to, uh, yeah. with darkness descends. Uh it and I actually think to the point where it's maybe a choice between the these two modes before it was like you just always took reliable too i think now yeah. you could you could take infiltrate and be reasonably happy with it um the significant change for him is fear and dead men that's a completely different card now so after attack is resolved against darth vader this round the attacking unit suffers one wound for each wound vader suffered during that so, so i know the text is completely different i know it looks completely different it's actually exactly the same uh, that is that is the the effect that would have happened. Well, he doesn't get the dodge token. Yes, sorry, he doesn't get the dodge token. You're right. Yeah. But as far as the returning fire effect goes, it is it is identical. Um, because you took wounds on blanks as opposed to surges before. Um, right. So it's it's fun. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I guess there's less. You just don't get the dodge token. Yeah, and you're not like uh, it's not a random thing, and like because uh, there's it, still a potential that you wouldn't. And I'm pretty sure he's got deflect natively, so you actually like return wounds on deflects with this and with uh taking wounds, so it actually yeah. like 50% of the uh, 50 of the time, anytime Vader rolls a save, you're gonna do a wound to them, probably. Right. Um, so we we covered uh annihilation looms. Yep. pretty pretty extensively already uh the next thing is moff gideon's uh moment of consideration yep um it's now units issued in order by this card gain one standby token yeah. it used to say fire support um this is essentially the new effect of fire support anyways yeah. i think they yeah. just simplified it by saying they get a standby token which is fine um uh, and then the Blizzard Force cards. Um, I didn't look deep into these, but so the number, the one point, uh, the one pip is unrelenting fire. Two units. That's all. Yeah, enemy units. What is this one? Enemy units cannot remove more than one suppression token during their rally step this round. 
uh i think it's, I believe it's the same. same i think a lot of these are the same i don't yeah. know if they're templating changes or or what um I'm sure that there is like a nuance change in here that I haven't noticed. Yeah. But all three of the Blizzard cards, I'm pretty sure, are 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 the same. Okay. Um, there might be like, I don't know, overwhelming barrage is still the beam attack with blast and suppressive and yeah. Um, maybe maybe it didn't have critical three before. I don't I don't know. Um, um, it, yeah, it didn't have critical three. It did not. No. Okay, all right. And, so I guess they yeah. decided they decided this card needed to be even better and gave it critical three. Yeah, uh, they definitely did. Uh, <laughs> so then, debark for ground assault. Let's see, each friendly core gets you know, issue an order using this card gets spur. That's the same. Yeah, weapons of each friendly core and suppressive, which I think it did before too. Uh, order again. Yeah, same same. Okay. So. So they must have wanted to update Overwhelming Barrage, and they were just like, ah, put them all in the new template then. I Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Um, uh, okay, so then um, the next changes are, and I don't know if these got much change, but we could take a look. So uh, this is for Tempest. So uh, let's see. Drive them out. I believe it's the same. Oh, they uh they changed the the range. So, uh, right now, drive them out. Says friendly vehicles gain demoralize one this round. The first time a friendly vehicle with a phase up order token ends its move at half range of a of an enemy unit this round. Roll a white dispense uh white defense dice. Um, the first time, and it used to be displaces. That's yeah, it was because displacing is a mistake. Uh, right. Right. Uh, so what's the next one? We... we need reinforcements, which gives units disengage, which I think it gave before as yep, well. It did. Um, and then the next one's constant alert, Mike. If you want to read that one, and I'll check the old card. Yeah, when a unit is issued ordered with this card, it gains one aim token for each enemy unit at range one. If it did not gain any aim tokens, it gains a standby token. Yeah, Again, same. this is basically the same text. So I think what happened is they changed one card, and then they were just like, you know what? Just uh, we'll put the other ones in the new template so that they're all so when people print them. It's out. it's weird because they did that with some stuff and not others. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, gunner infantry is pretty much the same. Yep. Um, let's see. The uh, font on this squadron on me card has got to. Yeah. It's got to happen here. Okay. So <laughs> at the start of his uh, major far quads activation, this run each other friendly vehicle at range one of him may perform a free pivot. Then they may perform a speed one move. Um, that's the same. They changed the icon, is what they changed. In the yeah, and I think armor cavalry is the same too. It's just templated, very. Like, yeah, they just changed the. Um, oh, and they put it into a bullet points. So that's what I mean. Yeah, the te the template is just very different. Yeah. Um. And then there is the fifth brother command card. I care not for your struggles. Units are issued in order by this card gate dauntless. I think there might have been inspire on this card too. Yeah. Um, before. Oh, you know what? On the sorry, armored cavalry, the one change uh, that you are gonna want to pay attention to is the first bullet point. If it used to be just front arc, now it's front arc or undeployed, it gets a dodge token. Yeah, I see. Fun. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's pretty much all the the that's updates. Empire. The empire, you know, there's some like. Uh, there's a smattering of like heavy weapon changes and stuff, but it's all yep. nothing. Nothing's too crazy. Um, you know, you got your storm, snow, and short trooper like double squad upgrades. You know, and the and the scout trooper sniper rifle changed. Yep. Um. Yeah. And yeah. That's so that's that's the empire changes. Um, uh, I think overall, good. They're they're. Again, we said this towards the top, but like they're kind of identifying the faction, uh, which is good. Um, they're 
bringing things into the template and they're kind of changing some points and stuff. So all good changes. All good. Except for transport. That one can go fly a kite. Yeah. I, I like that. Um, the Imperial identity seems to be more about commanders and them supporting their army. Yep. That, and, and vehicles than bounty hunters, which is what Empire kind of was under the old edition was, yeah. you know, you took a smatter of Empire units, but the thing that mattered was it was really like a Boba Fett list with a bunch of, it just happened to be Empire because, you yeah. know, because that was the only place you could take Boba Fett, right? Um, and now I feel like the fact that like the, the Mercs can't use the Exemplar makes that synergy like less good. And the fact that all the rest of this is like, it's kind of got the clone thing going on where the the imperial officers are actually like there to support their units in the way that like Anakin and Padme were um, right for the clones, you know. Well, and it definitely makes like, you know, listen, I played double heavy all the time because I loved it, not because it was good or easy to play. Um, it definitely makes my job here playing double heavies i mean i have more points to play with now number one but also i i have some commanders that'll actually freaking support my heavies uh instead of just being kind of supporting my heavies you know so so that's all good but uh yeah all right well we're gonna wrap it up here thanks for listening thanks for staying this long uh we are the notorious scoundrels i'm jay and i'm mike and uh, Kyle's key phrase here, Jay's response here, and that's it.